Hello and uh, welcome to Global Associates uh, lecture series on various accounting topics. I'm Mohammed Ashik Khan, the managing partner and the principal consultant of Global Associates. Today I thought of discussing some excerpts of IS 16 specifically relating to revaluation and excess depreciation. Now, according to IA 16, they have given a provision related to revaluation. The revaluation talks about saying that let's say you have any property, uh, you could have a freehold property, a freehold property could be land, building or any other property of this nature, any other property. Now, according to according to the company policy, according to company policy and according to any accounting concepts, mainly prudence plus accruals concepts, the company should review, the company should review, the company should review the the market value of these given property of this given property then if the market value is different to the carrying amount of any such property, then these properties should be zero. These properties should be Now, when you are doing this revaluation, let's say we are doing a re carrying out a revaluation for um, some, let's say we are doing a revaluation for a depreciable asset. Depreciable asset. And assume for the sake of example, the cost of this asset is 200,000. Cost of this asset is 200,000 and we purchased this asset on 1st January 2010 and the lifetime is 10 years following straight line method depreciation. So per year depreciation, per year depreciation will be 20,000. We assume that the asset was in use for five years. We assume that the asset was in use for five years. So when the asset was in use for five years, then what we do is that we uh, calculate depreciation, we have to calculate the accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation will be 5 into 20,000, which will be amounted to 100,000. So the carrying amount is 200 minus 100 and it comes to 150. And now, sorry, I made a mistake here. 
It's not 150, it's 100. But based on the revaluation, based on the revaluation, we arrived a revised value of 150. And the remaining life of the asset is still another 5 years. If you look into this closely, between these two numbers, the revaluation brings out a revaluation surplus of 50. This is the surplus. So, when we are preparing the statement of changes in equity, we will have one column called revaluation surplus 50. Now, we have to calculate, dip, uh, calculate depreciation based on the uh, revised number. So, the revised value is 150 and remaining life of the asset is 5. So, if you divide 150 by 5, you will get 30. Now, you can understand that prior to depreciation, this is Prior, post, revaluation. Prior to revaluation, depreciation per year is amount to be 20. Post revaluation, depreciation per year is 30. Accordingly, a depreciation of 10 has been more. This is what we call excess depreciation. This excess depreciation, I16 is allowing a permission for management to transfer that 50 from the revaluation surplus on a yearly basis to retain earnings. So what you do is you subtract 10 here and you add up the 10 to return earnings if it is in the total. So that is there is zero. So there are, then if you think about the double entry debit revaluation surplus 10 Credit return earnings 10. So effectively, in the profit and loss account, we will be charging depreciation 30. So my profit would have gone down by 10 because original profit depreciation was 20. Now the depreciation is 30. So the profit has been reduced by 10. And that 10, the adjusted 10, has brought down to the return earnings. And I am giving that 10 from the revaluation surplus to return earning. Accordingly, the impact will be zero. I mean, net impact is that uh, there is uh, zero. Actually. So this is what you got to do when you come to excess depreciation according to IA 16 under revaluation uh, principles. Thank you very much for this uh, watching this video and kindly like my videos subscribe them and as well press the bell button for you to receive more notification from our video channel or YouTube channel for Global Associates. Thank you very much once again.